Steve, how's it going? Like, subscribe, etc. This week I have done a track inspired by Biosphere Shenzhou. So my research took me to all corners of the internet. I uh, got one really high quality resource from a guy called Lars Lentz, larslentzaudio.com, and he did a full breakdown of how Biosphere created the, um, the track, one of the tracks on Shenzhou. So it's all using loops from Claude Debussy, and now for reasons of copyright and originality, I didn't want to use Debussy, so I set out taking some basic principles. I created my own orchestral pieces. You can see in the background now the orchestral setup I used with Pan, I used EQ, and just tried to set things with reverb so you had like a proper orchestral sort of thing. I used samples from Reason 2.0, the orchestra samples, so probably about 2002. So technically quite low quality, given what you've got around now, but they weren't at the time, of course. So the principal things that really drove this piece were the sample selection, EQ and filtering, and effects, which is mainly reverb and saturation. So I tried to keep to the brief on the biosphere and roundabout way, but I also put my own stamp on it and then got slightly carried away, as is my want. Uh, so check it out. So here's the project. Um, you notice I've got quite a lot of parts and I think I've got way more than Biosphere was using on his, but I just kind of got excited and started enjoying myself. Uh, so it may be a little bit busy, but it doesn't sound like it at the minute because I've got things sort of coming in and out. So we'll see how we feel about it. Um, as I said, these are the different parts that I used and I kind of went for a really deep, full on low end sound and track. Um, the principal thing I used was scene 12 because it had quite a bit of orchestral thing going on. So this is scene 12 in its raw form. I used this clip out of the entire scene 12. Which you can hear. Lots of sort of moving around with the orchestra just trying to create sort of waves and troughs, that sort of thing, peaks and troughs. If I slow that down by an octave, you can hear what I've used up in here. So if I solo the first part. Now this low drone is I clipped a sample and took it out of Ableton, clipped it, but I processed it with echo and reverb and a little bit of boost and crunch. So if I play this now without the effects on it, You can hear the effects compared to the one, but if I put that on now, so I've just got this pushing the width out, I've got boost and crunch preset from the amp, and then dark room from the spectral blur. So without it, You can hear what it does, bit of darkness, and then I've used the EQ8 just to chop down on that EQ there because I don't want anything in the high end, I just want those low frequencies coming out. I've done very, very similar on the second one, which I've called Lowest Drone, but I've just got the boosted crunch on this one, and I wanted this one to be a real deep rumble. So this is just less velocity on this one, and then it comes in like a bang. It's almost like one of those big kettle drums getting boomed in an orchestra. On the third part, these first six parts are all using the exact same sample, just in slightly different ways. So I've got the boost and crunch again, and then I've got reso mirrors there on the spectral blur. And I'm using a very low amount of harmonics. I'll turn that off. You can't hear a huge difference, but if I turn that up to full, That's what it sounds like, and I undo that. And I think a lot of it was in the pre-processing, putting the boost and crunch on, and the echo and reverb that kind of let it become a big sample before I started processing it in this way. What I thought could be quite nice here, actually, was just to show you a little bit of the process of going through setting up a sample. So I'm going to drag a random one in. We'll drag eight. If I drag that into here, that'll create a simpler and. A lot of it is about the sample selection, so we'll play it at the pitch. And it's looking for something like the sound of. That's quite an interesting thing, the way that came up there. So I'll take that, I'm gonna pop the gain up. 
Now we can pitch that down. It's already got a really haunting sound to it. Now if I take that and let's go into the effects and one of the things that I saved, the vintage record, we'll drag that into there. That's great, and I'm going to create a return track. We'll just right click, insert return track. I'll use a free plugin on this one. I'll use the Valhalla Super Massive. Drag that in, and we'll go just to the. Uh, let's go for something, Halls of Orion. Put that up to 100% because we're on the sends. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click, insert an audio track and I'm going to set the audio to resample and then what I'll do here is that key that I was pushing, I'll just double click to create a note and I want to make this probably, I'll make it three bars long and then drag that note out to there. Brilliant and then I can just select that to record enable it click to record great so we've got that now as an audio file so what I'm going to do in that MIDI track there we'll just drag the audio into it and we've created another simpler so that is now needs a little bit of gain again that's already got the effect applied to it so let's say I don't quite like the beginning of it. I like a little bit of release on it so it's got a pad type sound. But it does fade out so what we're going to do is drag that in and we're going to create a loop. Set the loop length back so it loops around about there. We want it to fade so we'll smooth out the rough edges of it. That's great, and then we can double reverb it. And if I add another note at the keyboard with it. Instant ambient goodness with not doing an awful lot, just all about sample selection and playing around with it. So get back to the main track. And then the lower drone. We're using the exact same sample again here, going through Boost and Crunch again. But on this one, I wanted to add a little bit of stuff going on above the octave, and I want a little bit of chorus, a little bit of auto pan. So if I play that with, and then without, and without the Boost and Crunch. adds an awful lot to it. It's not an awful lot of processing, but it does an awful lot to the sound. It's relatively simplistic, but of course, like most of these things, it's all in the time you spend and the trial and error and actually trying to get things sounding right. Uh, this one is just using the original sample, but pitched lower down. So if we go back to this, scene 12 here that's what that actually sounds like without any processing whatsoever so we get on to the loop drawn and then I've got echo on here I don't think I've got anything going on the character and again EQ just hitting the top and bottom but I do have the filter freak working on this one if I bypass that It's not doing too much, it's it's just a tiny little bit. I'll turn that up. It was probably actually doing a little bit too little. That's a little bit better there. Um, but you can do that with Enableton. I just use that because it's a Sound Toys plugin and it's a shortcut. 
And I think that's the way it is with a lot of plugins. You end up using them because they're a shortcut, not because they're better than stock plugins enabled. Now there are some exceptions, of course. Quick note on the warp function on tracks three, seven and eight, I engage the warp on the simpler. So if I play you just what that would sound like with and without so you can get an idea. And warp off. Yeah, so what that's done is that's kept the same thing. So the warp with texture has allowed me to stretch that out a little bit without losing the, the quality of the sample originally. Now the grain size and the flux make a little bit of difference here. So if I play around with those. Less perfect with lower grains, unsurprisingly. And the flux is how much it moves around. The flux, randomness to the process and the samples how much it moves around. And with the next two tracks, I used scene 12 again, and we're honed in on a different part of it. And what I wanted from this was I wanted a really distorted, deep sound, really crackly, messed up, distorted sound. So if I push that, you'll see we've got the EQ, there was that frequency there felt nice to accentuate. And we've got his tape mode here. You can see the little bit of wobble. We've got a lot of noise going on there, but we've got the gate set. So if I take that off, it's constantly going to make noise. So set the threshold down at minus 47. So play it, take it off, and then it fades out as the volume goes down. So that played on there. And then we've got a second distorted sound here. I've EQ'd off the bottom end, pushed up the top end there because it sounded good. And what I've got with here is a gated noise a thing that I've set up myself. So we've got a little bit of flange on it. We've got the crack, but we've got a gate afterwards. So if I turn that gate off and actually solo the track, that's got a constant crackle on it. So I wanted this to only fire when a certain amount of noise goes through it. So you can hear that, so it's cutting off there, but because obviously it cuts off fairly quick, I've added an echo to it just so we've got a little bit of something going on and pushing out there. And I've also put the crystallizer on, so if I play one of the sections here, I'll turn the crystallizer off. There's a nice echo on it, but the crystallizer does a lot of nice things in the higher frequencies as well. Likewise, if I turn the echo off. We've still got a like, nice stuff going on, but I like the combination of the two of them there. And in the strings, I used one of the different scenes, scene number 11. Because I had quite a lot of nice plinky plonky things going on with that. So for this, there's not an awful lot happening. We're just dirtying it up. So we've got the sample rate there, low sample rate one, the default settings, I tweaked it a little bit. And then I've got Wide and Dirty, which is a preset on the erosion audio effect. And on the EQ, I just wanted to take out that bottom bit. It was just a little bit of trial and error, see what worked, what didn't work there, um, whilst I'm zeroing in on those frequencies in there. And it was really because after I'd EQ'd it there, there was just a little bit too much going on up there and it didn't feel balanced in a nice way, it just felt like it needed to squash those peaks over there. Now the string horn, it's a very haunting thing. I've got the same thing going on with the sample rate, the wide and dirty, but then we've also got a reverb on, if I take that off. And the EQ there on the reverb just to get rid of some of those peaks. But it's just a haunting enough drony cave, again, a preset on the hybrid reverb device. And on the EQ here, I wanted to just take out those little bits of peaks there because they just didn't sound quite right to my ears. For the next one, we've got the... This sort of ghostly pinging in the background there. And that is EQ down, so we can keep the range down. We've got a round the head preset on auto pan, 
and then I've got an echo in there with not very much happening. It's the generic set of dotted eight notes. I haven't done anything else to it. It's just as you find it, just to add a little bit of width to it. And then the next section, which I've called string horns. Here you see, it's all about sample selection. This just sounded really creepy and weird. And again, you're just playing it down the keys. So if I play this really low. And all we're doing on here, we're actually doing the same as we've got on the first two, I believe, where we're looping the sample. But what we've got, if I zoom in, I'll zoom in on this one, we've set the loop to about half the length of the file, and then we've got a fade of 50% so that if I go back to this one, you've got that loop point there. If I increase the loop, but I like where it was on there, and likewise with the string home one. A lot of it gives the effect of a creepy old record just working on a loop. And we're doing Biosphere, but also one of my favourite uh, games, Bioshock. And Bioshock, great storyline to it, absolutely fantastic. But also the creepiness of walking by these old records playing, like how much is that doggy in the window and stuff like that, really creeped me out and it just added so much to the atmosphere. So I've got a real love for that type of thing that, that just... 50s, 40s, 50s nostalgia where you just feel like you're walking through some sort of time loop or something. Well, you wouldn't walk through a time loop, you'd be sort of circling around a time loop. Walking through a time warp, time warping, time walking. Anyway, the next track is we're on the same area for the loop, but we've just got a real sort of creepy weird thing a little bit of ensemble and a bit warmer preset on the saturator so if I play that and then now that deliberately sounds bad looping wise it's not a smooth loop but I've deliberately made it sound if I take the ensemble and the bit warmer off Obviously that adds volume there, I haven't balanced out the output. Just changes it enough to make it really, really nice. And the next one is all about the phasing. And we're back to scene 12 here. Now the EQ, I've just rolled off the bottom end and I have Vintage Record. So all I'm using on this is Dirt and Grit on the Redux. His tape mode on the Echo, one of the standard patches, and Flanger Rebound again on the Phaser of Phalanger, one of the uh, Phalanger, one of the standard patches. I'll take this off. It already sounds quite old, but you're just dirtying it up. And because again on this his tape mode we've got a lot of noise, which has got a threshold to it. I'll take the gate off. So that's what you get in that little bit of hiss every time it echoes. You hear that little bit of noise in it, it just adds character to it. Like we do with a lot of music, just adding character by different analog type things. Otherwise in the pure digital world, it can sound a little bit, yeah. So Lo-Fi Piano is using scene three. These two are both from scene three where we've got a little bit of piano going on I wanted to add. So just focus now. And we've used the Wide and Dirty preset, the Boost and Crunch again, to add to that. And it's not really doing an awful lot to it. Just with the EQ, what you're doing is you're taking away that bottom end, taking away that top end, so you're making it sound very sort of strange. And again, you're making it sound a little bit like it's come from an old record. So with the Washed Piano, I have four different echoes and again, I've got Boost and Crunch. I've got the EQ sort of narrowing it down. So if I play that, you won't hear very much from it at first, but the echoes sort of build up. Just was setting a little bit more on the dry wet each time, playing around with the echo times. 
generally a little bit of trial and error on that one until I got something that I really like the sound of. And the airy, that is actually sampled from scene 12 and it's the same as the actual first drone but it's just one little section of it and I put that so you can hear how that sounds before and then all I've done is pitch that up and we'll play one of those we're using the loop function again and we've got a nice sort of repeated loop there and it kind of sounds like an airy pad And because I didn't actually start properly on this, I didn't use the template to start, I just kind of chucked the samples in and I just saw where it took us. I didn't actually properly do it on the template. So I put a pre-master in there where I just put a glue compressor and set the threshold to pretty much at the peak I was working at. And then an EQ just to roll off the real bottom end and the real top end. Quick thing about send effects, I have the Valhalla room on send A. Not massive, 4.95 seconds, because there's a lot already going on on the samples that I've got. I've got that on every single track. There's one thing about Session View here, you can use it as a great mixing tool because you can drag these meters from there and drag them right up so you can use this for mixing just to get everything balanced right. It works really well. Um, on B, I've just got a straight quarter door dotted echo, a little bit of wobble on it. And you can see I only have that on one of the string horn sections and on the lo-fi piano, which is quite big on the lo-fi piano. And the third one is echo verb. It's the same echo and it's the Valhalla room reverb again, but I've got a 15 second on there. So it's quite a, a long decay time. And that is happening on the lo-fi piano. And again, on number seven, the distorted track only. Back to the studio. I will play this at the end now so you can hear the full track. Um, but I'm quite pleased with it actually. And it, like I said before, you, you look at what Biosphere did and how he achieved the sound and there's not an awful lot in it, but nobody else did it. You know, this is the same thing with a lot of arts that you see, whether it be music, whether it be visual arts, nobody else did that. You had to have that there to actually loop and play and filter. I mean, I haven't really used much filtering, whereas he does for the sound. I've kind of layered the sounds a bit more. So it's a beautiful technique. I'd really recommend um, having a little play around, record. Um, I could probably send you some of these loops if you wanted to play with these uh, and just see what you can do with it. Stretch it, warp it, change it and see where you go. So thank you very much. And here's the track, like, subscribe, etc.